Yes, sir, I certainly would. Why? Uh, well, uh, if prices would remain stable or lower. If they lower the prices, they'll get more volume. The higher you go with anything, the less volume you get. Every time you raise the price of anything, you, you lose some volume. If they'll get goods down to where people can, can buy it, your recession will be cured then. Sure. Why? Because I need it. <laughs> Thank you. If prices stayed like they are today and things went normal, I'd make a raise because I work on commission. Thank you. Yes. Why? Well, because I don't make enough wages to meet the prices. No, I don't think so. I, I think that um, I would want to increase and improve myself and uh, improve my rate of pay. Thank you. We'd be happy to. Could you tell us why? I like my job. I think the pay is sufficient. Thank you very much. Absolutely, and I think it's a thing to do. Why? Well, because as long as we keep this far in effect, we'll never get any place like we're going. Well, for the time being, yes. Of course, if times change, it'd have to be something else, too. I mean, I make a fair wage, so I'd stay with what, what I make right now. Thank you very much. Well, that depends. What's it depend on? On, this, on just, this, just if my family was the same size as it is now. Well, it'd be okay, but if my family was to increase, well, I don't think it'll work. Thank you. There is no doubt about the men's work. They are as good as you can find. This was the assessment made today by Police Chief Roy Bergman about Detectives Cliff Roberts and Jimmy Doyle shortly after he discharged these officers from the police force. Police Inspector Bert Giddens made these reasons for the firings in his statement to the press. Officers Cliff Roberts and Jimmy Doyle are being discharged from the Oklahoma City Police Department this day because of their recent activities. One, because of the shooting out of the street light in the southwest part of the city, and two, that there was a strong indication that they were drinking at the time this incident happened. I think it's only fair to point out as members of the narcotics squad, in the past these men have done an excellent job in the apprehension of criminals in this particular area. We feel that this is a regrettable incident, and we regret it very much. And just what have these men accomplished during their years with the Oklahoma City Police Force? A letter from the director of the Federal Bureau of Narcotics School cites Roberts as a fine student and says he reflects great credit on the law enforcement agency he represents. Another letter from the district supervisor in Kansas City of the Federal Bureau of Narcotics credits Roberts and Doyle with breaking up one of the most outstanding dope cases in many years cites them for great ingenuity in tracing the source of supply of heroin. These men were given credit for being largely responsible for breaking up this case. And just last summer, U.S. District Attorney Paul Kress praised the two officers for spending many hours beyond what was expected of them in bringing narcotics cases to trial. Here's the score that Roberts and Doyle chalked up in 1957. 307 dope investigations, 31 cases involving 53 peddlers went to trial. All were convicted, 11 still to come to trial. Today we've talked to many officers who had not an unkind word to say about Roberts and Doyle. But perhaps the case can be summed up best by the words of Chief of Police Roy Berkman, who said what an officer needs above all is self-discipline.
Captain Carson, the Oklahoma oil industry has charged that voluntary controls on oil imports are not doing the job. Is this correct? Well, I suppose uh, almost everyone apparently in the oil industry and out of it has a different idea of what the job should be. Uh, the fact is that the voluntary program was designed to hold crude oil imports to a level that uh, would not threaten our national security, and that's been done. Do you think that mandatory controls would have a healthy effect on the oil business? Well, it would depend, of course, on what level uh, of imports uh, were controlled by mandatory controls. Certainly, if the levels were set at approximately the same levels that they are in the voluntary program, nothing would be gained except to put a straitjacket on the industry, or at least on a segment of the industry. How about a legislature that's been a fourth of his time, passing special acts of one sort and another, that they knew ought to have known, my friends, that, that were unconstitutional. And the governor's a weak need that he wouldn't veto to them because he didn't want to offend the sponsors. Now, if that's good government, I want no part of it. I want to lay this right on the table. I talked to Bud Stoll tonight, and I said I wanted to go direct to the department head. Here's a whole flock of people that they herded in like cattle to the Atkinson headquarters Monday night. Top secretaries, Rita Kassad for Stoll, Patricia Clark for Mr. Biddle, Mc Marie McCormick for Al Crosby, Bonnie Hill, for, and so forth down the line. The next night they had a fresh crew. They promised them a dinner. They didn't get anything but sandwiches. They went down there to work free. Now then, Governor Gary is going to have to quit double-talking. If he means what he says, he ought to say these people can't do it, or if they can do it, then Bill Harkey's people and Jim Reinhardt's people and everybody else's people ought to be able to put a bumper sticker on their private car and work for these people, and they ought to quit threatening them. Bud Stoll told me, and I guess it's an executive hatchet act and not an executive hatch act, said that they have been advised that if they guess wrong, they lose their jobs. It means that they're... 